Good morning. Thank you for joining me again in my shed in the garden at the house that sat down. Now, when I woke up this morning, I was a little bit stressed because I had been planning on painting the next painting in the schedule of the tutorials that I'd worked out. Um, but I didn't want to paint that. I wanted to paint something completely different. And then I realised that if I make the rules, I can break them. So I, instead of doing the painting on the schedule, I am going to be showing you a special mixed media project today. The plan today is to work on a mixed media, multicoloured floral piece. These are the two finished pieces and you can see that this one on the right uh, is actually just on a piece of card. I've primed it with white acrylic before painting on it and the other one is on a textured canvas. Now the textured canvases are really quite special um, I make them myself. They add an interesting degree of depth to the finished piece. Now, if you want to uh, learn how to make your own textured canvas, if you search on YouTube for Alice May Textured Canvas, uh, it should identify a 14 minute video that I uploaded in November 2017. Uh, and it shows you step by step how to turn an ordinary flat stretch canvas into a textured canvas. However, don't worry if you don't want to do that or you don't have what you need to do that. A standard stretched canvas, a primed piece of nice thick cardboard with a layer of white acrylic paint on it will still work just as well. Obviously, I've got a whole range of oranges and yellows. Uh, now, the one I really want is actually the lemon yellow. But sadly, um, as I pick it up, I realise it's actually empty. So uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to go with the process yellow, which is a bit brighter than I would like. Um, but we're just going to work with it and see how we get on. So I do have a habit of pouring straight onto the canvas and then mixing the paint on the canvas. Um, this particular technique is one that involves just chucking the paint at it and it's great fun. You can see I'm using a decorator's brush. It's a two inch one and I'm using it at a 90 degrees to the canvas. This is so that the bristles work in and around the texture uh, better because we don't want too much white showing through in the upper section of the painting. Now I'm toning some of the bright yellow out with white, um, but I still want it really quite dark at the top. So I'm going to be putting some more dark yellow in at the top again there. I really do like using very bright colours. And then we're sweeping movement down towards the middle of the canvas. We don't want to go much further than the midpoint with the yellow. Okay, I'm going to do the same now on the primed piece of card. Start with the yellow at the top again. Maybe not quite so much because it's flat. Without the texture in it, it won't use up quite so much paint. And it's a sweeping downwards movement from the top towards the uh, towards the middle of the canvas. Okay, working that lovely bright yellow down towards the center of the canvas, but making sure not to go too far down. I don't want to go past the midsection. Again, putting the lighter white in to just take the top tone of that bright yellow down just a little bit. Actually one of the more expensive colours, this process yellow. Uh, not quite sure why, but it is a beautiful colour. Okay, so let's look at some of the greens that we might want to go with here. Uh, I've discarded all the dark ones and I'm going with a nice bright, I think it's called bright green actually. And I'm going to bring that in from the bottom. Now the majority of the yellow is off the brush, but there's still a tiny little bit on it. I haven't bothered to wash it because you end up with wet bristles and that'll then make the the paint not only too malleable but it will also uh, soak your canvas and once you've made these textured canvases it's not a good idea to get them terribly wet mainly because the PVA glue starts to dissolve then uh, and the tissue falls off so realistically um, you don't really want to be working with too much water. I'm just dragging the paint upwards there and it's starting to mix into the lower level of the pale yellow and now I'm using an up and down stroke there which again is 
starting to mix the green and the yellow in together. And it's actually quite nice to bring some of the yellow down into the lower section of the canvas. It doesn't matter if it's patchy, in fact, that's really what we're after. Um, we want it to look quite patchy um, so that you get the sensation that there's a lot going on, but it's not too busy for the eyes. Uh, the, the textured canvas does pull you into the picture quite well. Uh, and it almost fools the eye into thinking that there's there's a lot more detail there than there actually is. Um, and it's quite nice pulling up with a light brush that takes some of the darker paint up over the yellow, the lighter yellow background. Having wiped the majority of the green off the brush, I'm now bringing a bit more of the brighter yellow down um, because the way those two colours blend together is quite nice and it's, it's rather nice to see the, the bright yellow catching on the ridges of the textured canvas because it implies that the sun is touching onto leaves. Okay, so I uh, have done the same with the green on the second canvas now and I'm bringing in a darker green now particularly at the corners, which is quite an interesting technique. If you build your picture so that it's darker at the corners, uh, darker at the edges and darker at the top and the bottom, it pulls the eye into the picture and it almost fools it into thinking there's more depth to it than there is in fact there. Um, it's quite a clever technique. Um, and you can see that's what I'm doing by dragging this much darker green uh, I think it's an emerald green, this one, over the light green, but I'm using very, very gentle strokes so that the paint isn't being laid on in a thick layer. It's just touching and catching um, and it, again, implying a detail that, that's not really there, but it's a very nice effect. Okay, I'm going to do the same now on the textured canvas here, um, which we might find is, is actually more effective. You can see there, the way it's catching on the textured canvas does imply a, a far more complicated painting process than it's actually gone ahead. Um, and again, just very gently pulling a, a lightly loaded brush from the bottom of the canvas upwards for this particular effect. Um, and again I'm making it darker along the bottom as well as up the sides to pull the eye in. Now the next bit's quite fun. This is where we get to experiment with all the colours available to you. And clearly I've got myself a cup of tea, I've got a nice range of colours there, and I'm just examining which brushes I'm going to use. Um, yeah, that's the one I'm going to use. I'm starting by loading up some this is burnt sienna. I've loaded the brush with some burnt sienna. I've gone in a little bit close so that you can see a little more easily what I'm doing. I'm going to start by putting this dome shape down. I'm using a dabbing motion. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of white. And I'm just going to wipe that across the top. Now throughout this I'm going to be assuming that the sunlight is actually coming from the top left hand corner. Hence, it's catching on the top of that dark dome. Now, these are all going to be parts of flowers. Now, it, it's usually a good idea when building a, an image like this up to work in to work in odd numbers. So, obviously, ones, threes, fives, sevens. Uh, even numbers are not so good. Uh, it just tends to work a little better with the balance of the picture. So having done those three on that canvas, I'm just going to mark three onto the other canvas in a very similar way. I've speeded it up just a bit because I don't want this video to go on forever. OK, now we're going to go in with some petals. Okay, Back in close with the orange, just dabbing it where I think the petals will lie underneath this central part of the flower. Quite a large amount of paint on the brush there 
am just coaxing it. The whole point is that these, these thick layers of paint dry and add to the textural feel of the painting. Starting up near the dome and then just dragging down, almost like the petals of a daisy or gerbera. Now I'm not terribly good at gardening. I'm not really quite sure what any of these plants are. So I send my apologies for any gardeners out there. I really don't know one plant from the next. I know what I like, but I don't know what they're called. And I certainly don't know how to grow them. Um, but I do think plants make fantastic subjects for paintings. So I'm putting the highlight in there. You can see touching it in the top and then just dragging it down into the thick paint that I've left behind. And then again, mixing the paint on the canvas. Someone asked me recently where I get my inspiration for my paintings. And if I'm completely honest, I've got absolutely no idea. Um, but it's almost as if I carry around a sort of mental mood board in my head. Um, because sometimes I'll see a colour and I'll really like it and I'll know I'm going to do something with it. But I've absolutely no idea what that something is. And it's not until a later date when I then see a shape or an image uh, or some such thing that triggers an idea. And I know that the colour and the image are going to go together somehow. The painting comes together in my head. And then I find overnight that I'm actually dreaming about painting something. And I wake up and I just know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Under current circumstances, it struck me as really rather lovely that in spite of what's going on in the world... The flowers are still growing and the birds are still singing. Uh, and I think that's really what triggered my desire to paint this particular piece today. And so here we are doing this instead of what was on the schedule. OK, so we've uh, moving on to the smaller canvas now. I've decided to go in with a pale pink. You can see a different type of flower here entirely. Again, I don't know what sort of flower it is. I'm just making it up as I go along. And the whole point of this style of painting is that um, nothing is supposed to be looking too realistic. OK, having used the pale pink, I'm now going in in the lower section of the plant with dark pink. Um, again, working thick paint into already thick paint. Uh, you have to be very careful not to put your hand in the bits you've already put on the canvas. It's useful to hold the brush much further up the handle. There's less chance of you resting your hand in wet paint. Onto a different type of plant here. My intention is for it to look a bit like a bluebell. So we're going in with a mid blue and again a heavily loaded brush but with a dabbing motion, um, splodges coming down in not too systematic and not too rigid. Uh, and then going in with some white over the top to pull out highlights of where the sunshine might be touching on the little bluebell flowers. Not too much detail, more of a smudge really. Um, I don't think that's a technical term, but maybe it is today. I think perhaps one of the reasons I like painting this type of painting is that uh, I'm in complete control of it. Uh, I can make it up as I go along. And under current circumstances, it's actually really nice to have something that I can control. So it's no wonder I woke up this morning wanting to paint like this rather than following more rigid traditional painting techniques. Uh, it's certainly helping me to relax and I hope it'll do the same for you. You can see at the point there I'm putting in a much darker blue at the bottom. You usually find that all highlights have a contrasting low light somewhere on whatever it is you're painting. Uh, and by making sure you don't forget to put the low lights in as well, uh, that really does start to make the painting pop off the canvas towards you. Again, I've put five bluebells on, on the canvas there. They don't all need to have the low lights. Uh, and that's one way of 
putting things into the middle distance and then the distance behind. I've put more detail on the three larger ones and by not putting that detail on the two smaller ones there, they then sink further into the background. So the next colour I've chosen is a dark purple. Um, I'm, I believe I'm painting something like a crocus in at the bottom here, along the bottom level of the painting. Uh, it'll add another little bit of interest. Um, again, I don't really know what my plants are. And I do apologise if crocuses and bluebells and whatever those gerbera style flowers, if they don't all grow together under the same conditions at the same time of year, they do in my painting today. The action that I'm using there is just three sweeps with the loaded brush from the edge of the petal, pulling them together at the bottom. And I'm obviously going for seven crocuses to keep with the uneven rule, trying not to space them too evenly apart so that they actually do look quite natural. And once the dark purple is down there, I'm going to start my usual trick of sweeping in a little bit of highlight on the top of each petal. Sometimes I put too much and then have to go back in with the purple or pick a little bit of white up off another one and transfer it across. Because we don't want too much white, just a little touch to imply that the sunshine is touching that upper left hand edge. Okay, and then we'll come across onto the textured canvas to do the same. Slightly different pattern of flowers on there quite effective. Now this going on at the bottom is a dark green uh, implying just a, a suggestion of where where the crocus is meeting the stem and then I'm just going to put a little hint of a stem coming out of the bottom of each one. Um, now this is not a strong bold rigid line it's just a touch of dark green coming down uh, and I press the bristles of the brush into the paint tray so that it's flat, almost like a chiselled end, because um, I'm using my very small brush here. And then I'm just dragging a little bit of the green in short downward mo motions. Nothing is bold, nothing is solid. It's just a hint that there may be a stem for each of the flowers. And then I'll have to start putting a few hints of leaves as well in there just to imply that it's not floating in the middle of the air, that there is something connecting it to the earth. But we don't want too many stems because that will distract from the overall uh, essence of the painting. And then just a few random leaves coming in towards the bottom. Now I think I'm finished with the smaller canvas, but I think uh, it's uh, of a size where if I add any more to it, it'll start to look overcrowded. Uh, but the uh, larger textured canvas is, is another matter entirely. Having put the crocuses in, I now feel that actually this painting is missing something in the middle. I'm going to be putting a larger featured flower uh, down that centre, and I've decided to put a foxglove in. I'm sure there's a technical term for foxgloves, but I not sure I know what it is. Um, so I'm going to start by just marking it out with a pale, pale white and a little bit of pale pink as well. Um, they've got a fairly classic shape to them. They're not the same as a bluebell. Um, a lot taller and a lot thinner. Um, and they tend to curl around quite a bit. Actually, there's a bit in the wrong place there. I've just lifted it off. Um, I'm going to start adding 
bit more pink in there. Once again, I'm using my rounded brush, my long, thin brush with a rounded end, and I'm dabbing on really quite a thick blobs of paint um, that I'm then going to be uh, merging with the pale pink and then a much darker pink to get the impression of the depth of these individual uh, blooms of this flower. Constant dabbing action, working the paint into the texture and into the lighter and darker components of it. I decided to build it up at the bottom a little bit more as well. And there you have it, uh, the special mixed media project. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I look forward to seeing you next time. Stay safe and well.